Today, we are reviewing the Cabo Mantis 8, powerful dual motor yet affordable electric scooter from Cabo USA. The Mantis 8 features a ton of cool perks, such as a USB charger output to charge your electronics while riding. Today, we'll do an ultimate review of this scooter and see their claim of Mantis 8 being an all-rounder scooter is actually true. We had this scooter for more than a month and a half now, and we have taken it anywhere from paved trails, public transportation, urban commutes, and mountain off-roading. Let's get started with today's review. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, my name is Shiva Sapkara. I'm an engineer out here in Colorado, USA. I make videos on electric vehicles such as Tesla, electric bike, and electric scooters. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider being a channel subscriber. This scooter comes almost fully assembled. You just have a few steps and they send you all the tools required. You just have to lift the stem to get it upright and this tab slides down to lock the scooter. Then you can just adjust the clip on thumb screws until both sides get tight and you can clip them to secure the stem. To install the handlebars, we need to remove the four Allen screws from the top plate. After the screws are out, remove the top plate, flip the handlebar to make them upright. This is the time you need to adjust the handlebar to your preference on where you want your brakes and accelerator controls. Then, put the top plate back on, install the four screws removed earlier. You can then also install the front bag using the attached strap. This bag is quite handy to store phones, keys, and more. You can even fit larger water bottles in this bag and still have room left over. Don't forget to charge the scooter fully prior to taking out on your first ride. As for the spec, let's get the biggies out of the way. The Cabo Mantis 8 can go 25 miles per hour and has a range of 25 miles. More on the range later. It has a dual motor system with each motor having nominal 500 watt power giving a total of 1000 watt output. This is nominal. The peak power can easily surpass 2000 watt and the company claim the max power output is 2200 watt. You can really feel the motor kicking in, and it is truly a thrilling experience, but you can also set the power output to your desire. It can go up to 20% incline. It features a 48 volt 13 amp power lithium ion battery that sits under the deck. The max rider weight is 264 pounds or 120 kilograms. The unfolded dimension of this scooter is 46.5 inches by 45.6 inches. The folded dimensions become 23.6 inches by 45.6 inches. It fits very well in my Tesla Model 3 sedan and I still have room in my trunk. It is constructed using aviation grade 6061 or 6082 aluminum alloy frame and is forged in one piece. This makes the scooter lighter and much more rigid than steel. Speaking of which, the Mantis 8 weighs 53 pounds which is 24 kilograms. It uses 120 mm disc brakes on both front and rear. These are mechanical disc brakes and not hydraulic. The brakes are quite sensitive and work really well. The Mantis 8 features 8 inch tubeless road tires. These are fat tires and have excellent performance on various terrains. The Mantis 8 has front and rear spring arm suspension allowing riders to experience a smooth and controlled ride on various terrains. We'll talk more about the suspension performance later in the video. On the right side, we have two buttons that allow you to go from echo and turbo mode, then also single and dual motors. You can press these buttons while riding the scooter. Then we have the brakes, index finger throttle, and then the control screen. This screen is really bright and visible even in a bright sunny day. The screen offers lots of settings and we'll make a follow-up video in the near future to go over all those settings including power sensitivity, speed limit, and more. Another cool output hiding behind the display is a 5 volt USB output to charge your phone and other electronics. Moving towards the left, we have a button control for headlight, left and right turn signals, and a bell icon but this button currently doesn't do anything. It's dormant and they say the button is programmable for future use but didn't provide any insight on how to do that. The Mantis 8 does have a nice small mechanical belt on the left side. The handlebar grips are made out of foam which are really comfortable but not sure about the durability. 
Now we cover the basics of this scooter. It is time to talk about real results. As I said in the beginning, we took this scooter to various different places and lifestyle to put this through our test. First, let's talk about public transportation and urban commute. I hardly ever take public transportation, but to truly review this scooter, I lived a day of a commuter by taking the bus, the train, and riding around urban places in downtown Denver. Even though at over 50 pounds, this scooter is light compared to others in the same class. Of course, not as light as single motor entry level scooter, so it does make a little harder getting used to while taking this on a bus or a train. Overall, I would be comfortable taking this scooter in public transit. My wife thought it was doable, but she said it was a little too heavy to carry in and out of the bus, and because it does not have folding handlebars, it gets stuck sometimes. But she did have a blast riding around downtown. So it depends on how comfortable you feel carrying a 50 pound scooter. Finally, please check your local laws about bringing an electric scooter in the transit system. We may or may not have unknowingly violated some of those while making this video. So I would rate this scooter very high for riders taking public transit and doing urban downtown commutes. Instead of renting the you know, typical Lime or other scooters, perhaps the payback period would be quick on this one and you get to take it all the way to home and not just leave it on the side of the road like what you do with the rental scooters. Now onto the regular paved trail surfaces. The Mantis 8 performs exceptionally well on regular surfaces and trails. Having that flexibility of doing single versus dual mode is an absolute standout for this scooter. I normally ride in dual motor turbo mode because it's just so much fun. But if you don't have any hills and you are a lightweight rider, perhaps the Echo single motor mode would give you the best range and performance. You can easily hop curves, go a bit off-roading on the grass and navigate through regular commutes. I like the dedicated foot stand especially for longer commutes. Let's now talk about off-roading and dirt trails. I'm going to be honest with you, first I was skeptical. I was worried the tires would slip or this thing would shake too much that I would feel like my arms were gonna fall out. However, the Mantis 8 surprised me quite well. I took it to dirt trails like this one by the mountain lake and performance was better than expected. I did some off-roading as well while I took my Mantis 8 to Rocky Mountains here in Colorado. The scooter did shake and bounce quite a bit, but definitely not like other cheap scooters where I would be scared for my life. I think the Mantis 8 does a great job with those type of terrains because it has an excellent suspension system. Those dual spring arm suspension help a lot with potholes, gravels, etc. I still wouldn't recommend this scooter for off-roading as it is designed mainly for regular paved surfaces, but it's nice to know that this can perform well on those harsh conditions. Those smaller tires make it harder to do off-roading for an extended period of time. It is fine on smaller gravel or smooth dirt roads. For off-roading, I would recommend the Cabo Wolf Warrior or even the Cabo Mantis 10, which we will review in this channel in the near future. Let's cover some of the tested data. I'm 185 pounds and was able to consistently get 18 to 20 miles in paved surfaces with some hills going full speed, dual motor, turbo mode. I hit about 23 miles on echo mode, single motor, which makes sense because I'm going relatively slow. If you really want the max range, you could do level one, go under 15 miles per hour, and it should get you a good range for an extended period of time. As far as the speed, I tested with dual motor turbo mode and got 12 miles per hour on level one, 20 miles per hour on level two, and 26 miles per hour on level three. So their speed claim seems to be pretty accurate. Before we wrap this thing up, let me tell you my highlights about the scooter. The dual motor makes this scooter stand out from its competition. The peak power on Mantis 8 is comparable to other electric scooters in the $1,500 to $2,000 range, yet the Mantis 8 costs under $1,000. I have a special discount code for you all, so please do check that out. It provides a very modest speed and range in its class. I like the portability aspect of this scooter, as you can take it basically anywhere. The phone charger output is another big plus for me. The underdeck lighting provides excellent visibility without being tacky. The turn signals are visible from both front and back and very practical unlike other scooters which are rather confusing. Instead of one headlight in the front like the traditional electric scooter, 
this light provides visibility in all directions, especially on low light streets. The suspension system is quite good on Mantis 8. It certainly helps navigate various terrain with an ease. The Mantis 8 uses very little plastic and everything is rigid. It doesn't have any weird bends or clutter, making this scooter very aesthetically pleasing while also providing excellent reliability. I also really like how it offers customizations such as speed limit, power settings. For example, if you really want a powerful scooter in the beginning when you press the throttle or you want that power to get there over time when you are pressing on the throttle. Instant start versus kick start and much more that we'll cover in future videos. Here are a couple of my tips to Cabo USA for future improvement. Currently the only way to know if you are in a dual mode or echo mode or turbo mode is really by using it and feeling the power. I wish it had LED indicators of the mode when you press on those buttons are, or at least displayed on the screen. So having that option to see which mode you are in would be really helpful. Finally, when you turn on the power, it starts with level 3, which is the highest level. I like it that way so my scooter is not super slow when it's starting up. However, I think some folks would like starting with the level 1. So having an option to start with level 1 or starting with level 3 would be really nice. I'm sure I missed a few things in this review, so please do me a favor and let me know in the comment section below what you would like me to cover in my next follow-up video on this electric scooter. I hope you found this review helpful and enjoy today's video. And if you would like to see more videos like this in the future, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know any comments or questions you might have. You can also reach out to me in Instagram, Facebook, or in my email if you have specific questions about this electric scooter or any other content that I have in this channel. Again, I do have a special affiliate link and a discount code for the Cabo Mantis 8 in the description of this video. Please do check that out and don't forget to use the discount code if you are going to be purchasing this electric scooter. Thank you for your continued support to my channel. I will see you soon in the next video. Namaste.